Welcome to the last episode of the Leaner Together series. My wife and I just finished a 12-week lifestyle diet to take you alongside every step of the way, and we are going to show you our results today. My wife and I have been coaching individuals just like you to reach their fitness goals over the last eight years. A common theme that we saw within our clients is that they wanted to get ready for weddings. They wanted to get ready for their vacations, and a common time frame was 12 weeks, and we wanted to give you an example of us in the trenches doing exactly that. Oftentimes on YouTube, you will see people perform extreme diets or getting ready for contest prep. And we wanted to give you a real life application of what you can expect when getting ready for your wedding or for your vacation. We started this diet from a place of not tracking consistently, but being mindful of our nutrition, which is a common starting point for many of our clients. What we did from there was track for seven days, did our best to not change anything within our dietary intake from what we were doing previously to create our dietary baseline. This allows for us to set the calorie deficit more accurately relative to utilizing macro calculators. The reason being is because you are much more than just your height, your weight, and your current activity levels. You have many more things that are going on that need to be taken into consideration when setting your caloric intake. My baseline intake was 2,700 calories and Sue's baseline intake was 2,300 calories. In hindsight, my baseline calorie calories were a little bit lower and I was not having as many snacks throughout the day as I was prior to setting my baseline diet. Lesson learned. We both started with a conservative deficit of 10% from our baseline intake. My starting intake was 2,418 calories and Sue's starting intake was 2,040 calories. That gave me a macro breakdown of 210 grams of protein, 240 grams of carbohydrates, and 67 grams of fat. Sue's macro breakdown was 150 grams of protein, 225 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. Our goal was to make this part of our lifestyle. So when we were able to be 100% with our macros, we were. When we needed to utilize flexibility to eat out with family, go on trips to see friends, we used the flexibility then. We did not use flexibility as a cop-out when we were lazy or tired. For our activity, we prioritized our step count on a daily basis. I had 8,000 steps to start, and Sue started with 10,000 steps, and we both took the opportunity to resistance train four times weekly. When it comes to starting weight, I started out at 221.6, and Sue started out at 135.6. I had more body fat to lose than Sue did, and so I had a goal of losing one to 1.5 pounds of body fat each and every week throughout the 12 weeks. Sue's goal was to lose 0.5 pounds of body fat each week. And I've got some awesome news. We did it! We both accomplished the goal that we set out to do when we started this diet. My ending weight was 205 pounds, which gives me a total fat loss of 17 pounds and an average fat loss of 1.4 pounds per week. Sue ended at 130 pounds, which puts her in the ballpark of a half pound lost per week. One thing that we drive home so hard to every single one of our clients is that your fat loss is not just dependent on the scale. So we wanna take a look at these physique photos and really show you the differences that we had throughout this process. To end the deficit, my calorie intake was 2,135 calories, and Sue's final intake was 1,650 calories. From our initial baseline intake, that would put us both in the ballpark of a 25 to 30% caloric deficit. If you go back to episode seven of this series, you will see me talk about metabolic rate down-regulating as you diet. Go check that out because that is a really important piece when looking at the deficit over an extended period of time like this series. You may be thinking that that's not much change calorically over a 90-day period. 
We were much more aggressive with increasing our overall activity rather than decreasing our nutrient intake. Because when it comes to fat loss, it doesn't matter if you're increasing your activity or decreasing the calories that you're taking in, creating the energy deficit is what matters most. At the end of the diet, my step count was between 10 and 11,000 daily, and Sue finished at 11 to 12,000, and we continued to resistance train four times weekly. I got one thing to say when it comes to my photos. Boy, did I need to lose some of this weight. And it really came off of my neck and my face. When I look at these photos from the front shot, it is crazy to see how much smaller my neck and my face have gotten. And then I see that my legs have leaned out quite significantly, and then my midsection has tightened up quite a bit. When we look at my side photos, this is always the one that I think you can see the most fat loss because you do get a visual of anterior and posterior portions of your body. So I see fat loss everywhere in this comparison photo. And I can make this joke because it's about myself. In this one, I look like I ate myself. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding. I'm not kidding. That's how I feel. It's I'm talking about myself. I can say it. All jokes aside, another thing I see within this comparison is that I've struggled a large portion of my life with body acne, specifically around my shoulders and my back. And that's one thing that has cleared up dramatically over this 12 week period and having the fat loss and having the greater accuracy within my nutrition and my activity. And I'm really proud of that. When looking at my back photos, this is where I see the greatest fat loss through my lower back. And then I see much more detail and musculature being shown through my lats and through my upper back and even the backside of my arms. And the last thing I noticed in this photo that I was well aware of prior to starting the diet and become more aware of as I lose body fat is this boy needs some calves. So as I increase my calories following this, I'm going to have a large emphasis of bringing those boys up. When looking at Sue's photos, this was much more of a body recomposition for her. This was a time in which she had minimal fat loss goals and gives us an opportunity to be able to double dip. She was able to add some muscle tissue while seeing the fat loss that she desired. The first thing that jumps out at me when looking at Sue's front shot is that her delts lost body fat, but also grew in density from her starting photos. Her midsection and her legs tightened up while also seeing a little bit of density improvements to the muscle bellies that we see here. I was happily surprised when looking at Sue's side shot comparison. Sue's glutes, hamstrings, and quads all saw growth from the initial photos. Her lower abdomen, her lower back, and her entire midsection tightened up really nicely. And as we talked about in the front photos, those delts got some nice pop to them. When looking at Sue's back shots, we see fat loss off of her inner thigh, off of her lower back, and seeing those density improvements to her glutes as well. And don't forget, she had her trusty sidekick, Gus, in those check-in photos from start to finish. Diets don't mean much if the progress that was made is not sustained. If you adhere very well for 90 days and then following it, it's a big old f it fest. <laughs> and put back on all that weight you just worked so hard to lose, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. You want diet phases to instill habits, things that you can continue past the time of the diet being performed. That's resistance training regularly. That's maintaining a nutrition intake that's nourishing your body. It's also an opportunity to increase your self-confidence. Yes, it is great to look and feel good in your clothes, but in my opinion, the best way to increase your self-confidence is to make promises to yourself and keep them. Last one, are you ready? I'm ready. 12 weeks in the books, and we got a few questions from you guys about what we're doing next, but before we get into that, one question was, are you glad that it's finishing up? 12 weeks is a, a long diet. On paper, it doesn't seem that long, I suppose, and at times it felt like it was moving fast, but as we conclude this week, I can say that a 12-week diet is a good duration of time. I don't think that I would want to go much past this for a lifestyle diet. 
It's interesting you say that because one thing that I feel like I wish I would have done differently is make this a little bit longer diet. And part of that could be because my past dieting experiences have all been long diets. And so that's what I'm used to. And that's what my brain is kind of used to. I will say that 12 weeks is definitely a good duration of time, but I feel like I've been picking up so much more momentum towards the end of this diet and feeling in a good groove. And since I'm so used to longer diets that I'm just like, oh, I could just keep on going. And that was another question of what was this diet like compared to past preps? And I honestly don't feel like they're comparable at all. They are two very different goals and very different intents. Preps are a whole nother beast and you have to have your head on and that to be your sole focus. Whereas this, the focus was making it as lifestyle as possible. And that honestly ended up being a little bit more difficult than I thought. I thought, hey, just a little bit of a shorter prep and I'll be able to get all of this buttoned up. But not making it the number one priority was actually a little difficult. I would say in some context, the lifestyle diet was more challenging than a contest prep. And the reason I say that is because in a contest prep, it is that number one focused and you can use it as an excuse for basically everything. Mm -hmm. When your family wants to do something, nah, I'm in contest prep. But now I'm in this lifestyle diet to where I could eat with you if I really prioritize it, but sometimes I don't wanna prioritize it. And so I have to make that exchange and that trade off. And so in that context, it was more difficult, but in the grand scheme of things, definitely not the, the same grit and digging deep that you have to have when in a contest contest prep. It was a different type of grit because we constantly had to assess what the priorities were. Instead of having that clear vision of this is the number one priority, it was we have all of these other things going on and how do we make it work in these instances? And I believe you said it in last week's episode of just talking about you really can do whatever you want. It's just making the decision of how long you want to stay in the diet or what that trade-off is going to be. And I found myself in a position of, what is the trade-off and what am I willing to do and having to mentally go through that each time. So it definitely was difficult in that sense, but I also felt just such a revelation as I went through it of what dieting can look like, that it doesn't have to be all or nothing and I can still have results. Of course, I can't expect the same results that I would have in a prep because I have a very different intent. But I think for us, the challenge was making it lifestyle and truly falling into that. With talking about expectations, do you feel like your expectations were met throughout this diet? I didn't really know what to expect because it had been so long since my last diet and the last diet that I had was for contest prep. And so with this being significantly different, I didn't really know what to expect. I agree with you that I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when it came to exactly how this was going to go. And I think that I really have to get aligned with what was my goal. And at the end of the day, my goal was to make this a lifestyle diet. Also realizing that I have gained muscle and I've gone more intuitive within different times in my life when it's come to eating that I haven't had that. I've had extreme structure in the past. It's being able to, like you said, temper those expectations and also recognize the context of my body fat was coming from a few different places, but overall I am really happy with where I'm at. I think that my first pictures were honestly a little bit deceiving of I looked deceivingly lean comparatively to how I feel now, where there's definitely a difference in the pictures for sure. But when I go back to how I felt when I took those pictures versus how I feel now in my body, I know that there is much more of a difference than just what that scale says of the six or seven pounds that have been lost of truly how my body feels, how my clothes fit, what my energy levels are at are all different. So how can I sit here and act like what I wanted to happen didn't happen when it definitely did? Towards the end here, I feel like I've started to experience a little bit of diet fatigue. As we've gotten to this week, I'm 17 pounds down from my starting point. So it makes sense that I am starting to experience some of that fatigue. And so I would say just the last couple of weeks here, as I got closer and closer to my weight goal, I was I got a little bit more excited and pushed myself a little bit harder within every aspect. And that probably led to the diet fatigue kicking in. 
I originally was thinking over this question and felt that I don't have that much diet fatigue. Do I personally think that I could continue on dieting? For sure, especially if I had possibly a refeed or a diet break in place to make sure that I could keep on going. But also looking at all of the things going on, I definitely am feeling some fatigue overall and something has to give to lessen up that fatigue. Now the question that was asked the most is what's next? What are your goals? Are you reverse dieting? Even how are you gonna maintain the weight that you've lost as we exit out of this dieting phase? My game plan is to keep things pretty similar within my overall activity. I've really enjoyed getting my steps in. I've really enjoyed the yoga. I've really enjoyed the resistance training side of things. I'm just going to do a little bit less with my steps. I've got 10 to 11,000 right now. I think that something more manageable for me is to be at 8,000 on a day-to-day -day basis. And then on the weekends where I don't have as much desk time that is required of me, I'm gonna push up a little bit, maybe closer to 10 to 12,000 steps. When it comes to my food, I don't anticipate that I'm going to get into a reverse diet. This was a diet in which I did not have to get overly aggressive with my overall intake being above 2,100 calories. Yes, it is lower than my maintenance. And yes, it is certainly a caloric deficit, but it's not something in which I have dug myself into a very deep hole and need to build my way back up to my maintenance calories. So this gives me two options. I can maintain my current intake and slowly incorporate some different treats and uh, greater intuitiveness to different meals, or I can go the other direction and just jump right back to my maintenance. Am I going to see some scale changes in making that larger jump back around that 26 to 2800 calorie marker? Sure, but it's not necessarily going to be body fat it's going to be muscle glycogen being increased as well as fluid being pushed into the muscle. And I have to be cognizant of that as the scale would change if I was to go that route. The reason that we aren't specifically doing a very structured reverse diet is because of the experience that we have when it comes to dieting and food. Because we have both tracked for a decade or more, we know a lot about food. We understand how much food. I don't have a concern for either of us that we're going to just pack on fat or we're not gonna be able to be consistent or stick to a plan overall. So for myself, I am going to to end up eating around similar calories, especially since we leave for our trip here soon. And I know we're gonna have more flexibility when that comes. And last week, we also had a full intuitive day and just being able to be present with one another. And we really enjoy when we go to yoga of going and grabbing breakfast after, something to that degree. So we'll probably slowly start to incorporate eating out more frequently since we haven't been as much and being able to enjoy treats from my mom, uh, of course, or some good chocolate chip cookies are to be had. And I'm really going to be cognizant of the balance between that activity I'm having and what it looks like for food while ensuring that I don't under eat. So I will still be tracking macros, uh, especially during crazy times in my life. It's extremely helpful for me to make sure that I have enough energy. I have enough sus. I have enough substance that I can keep on going. For steps, I am gonna keep them at 10K for now, and especially as the summer continues on, because I enjoy being able to push myself to get outside. I'll probably stay between the eight to 10K range when it goes into winter, and that's always really helpful for me to have that range, and I had that before the diet started, because on the days that I could only make eight happen, I still hit my goal, and I still felt good about accomplishing what I wanted to, but then there were also days when I was getting towards that nine and 10K, where again, I was still hitting my goal and I could feel really confident about it. I think the most important part here and that we're both implementing is really taking a look at our schedules and our preferences where Alex likes having movement in place, but realistically getting 10K steps with how much desk time he has isn't always gonna happen during a work week. So instead of setting himself up for failure and saying, I'm still gonna hit 10, he's being realistic of, hey, 8K is something I can really aim for. But when the weekends come, I'm gonna be out there doing my thing and I'm gonna get those steps in. So I think if you were either doing this diet along with us or just following along with us and trying to learn through the process, I hope that you learned what matters the most is if you can follow the plan because outside of that, it does not matter what the plan is if it does not work for you. To wrap this up, 
Do you have any goals moving forward that you're trying to accomplish with finishing this diet? One thing I'm going to take away from this experience is that I can have my health and fitness be a priority, even with the amount of work that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. This has been something that I have used as an excuse for years now. I spend close to 50 to 60 hours a week at my desk. It's not something that I go around like bragging about, but it is the reality from a day-to-day -day perspective. And so that would you, I would use that as an excuse constantly. And by having this with you guys and showing you all step-by-step -step this process, it added a level of accountability that I knew I was going to force myself to show up for, even if it wasn't the best case scenario. And I assure you, there was a lot of weeks and days that it was like, this is not the best time for this, but I have to keep up with it. And I made it work. And so I think I'm gonna take that with me. And then goals moving forward is I want to start running. Running. Just a little bit. I, I don't have like a, I want to run a marathon. I want to run X, Y, and Z. I just want to be able to run consistently. I miss being able to run. And yesterday I was like, I'm going to run two miles. I'm going to run to Sue's parents' house to swim in their pool, but there's a lot of hills and my body was not prepared. So I've got some work to do within my running. I always find it extremely important to have a goal when you are finishing a diet or when you've just reached a goal, like the end of a diet, because otherwise you do all of this build up and you reach this thing and then it's kind of like, now what? What do I do? And it can kind of feel like you're losing purpose or motivation. So I always try to set some sort of goal and normally performance related as well. And I did mention this to Alex and I might regret saying this in the future, but I am wanting to really increase my squat especially since we've gotten the prime super squat bar. It has allowed me to squat and feel so much better and to be able to have higher output. So uh, we will have to talk about what training looks like once we get back from vacation, because really the only goal on my mind right now is getting to and enjoying vacation. But after that, then we'll talk a little bit more about the squatting. Thank you guys for joining us in this diet. As I've already said, I could not have done it without you. <laughs> if you would like more content like this moving forward, let us know in the comments or some topics that you would like to hear about us teach on or what have you, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next video. See ya! Bye! <laughs> Bye! Oh, hi mom. Bye! Oh, oh my gosh. Is it time to play?